Hey everybody, Sharon here from GameMeAct.com. Here we are today back in downtown Niketsu Story, grabbing the Manly Play Achievement. This is to beat the game without using any passwords or buying any special techniques. Start up the game. Once you are in the main menu, we are going to do this in single player. You can choose whatever you want for your character. Once you get to this screen, make sure you don't touch the difficulty slider on the bottom. You can adjust game speed if you want, so you can just set that to the bottom most one for fastest. Once you actually get into the game, it's time to start moving. Don't worry about killing any enemies, just focus on going where you need to get going, which is going to be the first town. So just keep working your way to the right, make sure you turn right here and then go through this exit and you should be in the first town. I recommend heading in to the first restaurant, which is going to be right here, and then stocking up on a few stat boosting items, most notably the second to last one on the list, this one which costs 400 yen. Make sure you blow all of your starting money on this, you should be able to buy 5 of them. That should give us a pretty nice bump to our total amount of health. After you are out of money, which one you want to make sure you leave and then continue your way to the right. You should be able to get to the second town once you are at the construction area. Make sure you turn when the turn shows up and then you should be in the second town. So because we pretty much spent all of our money in the previous area, there's nothing for us to do here. So we're just going to skip ahead and then head to the right. You should be now at the bridge where you are going to meet the girl and get the first major story beat in the cutscene. Once you wrap that up, it's time to continue our journey to the right. We're going to keep working our way right until we hit up the auto shop. So once you're in the foresty area, make sure you make the turn and then you should be outside of the auto shop. So head on inside and it's time to fight the first boss. So to get him to appear, you need to make sure you kill at least four normal enemies in the area. There is a nice little trick to this. Basically what you want to do is you want to hop up here and then grab the crate and then bring this down. And you could actually hit the enemies through the wall if you have a long enough weapon. So anything like a crate or a tire. And all you have to do is just bash them through the wall and you should be able to get through this without taking any damage. Now to get more enemies to appear, which one of these want to make sure you scroll the screen over to the right and then head back to the left and then more should pop up. Once again, you are going to need to defeat at least four in order to continue. Once you have beat at least four, it's time to leave the crate over here. So make sure you throw it away. Try your best not to hurt yourself. So don't throw it against the wall and have it bounce back and hit you. But once you've taken care of the crate, just make sure you jump back up and then which one of these want to work your way over to the left. So jump on these boxes and then get over the wall and then what you want to do is you want to make sure you stay on the second floor and then work your way to the left the boss should come out of this door instead of jumping down to confront him what you want to do is you want to make sure you jump back to where we came from and then you want to lower yourself down and that crate trick actually works against the boss as well he is going to take a while to defeat especially since you only have base stats at this point but with enough patience and because he can't hurt you you can just use the crate trick in order to defeat him so just keep smacking him through the wall and if he gets too far away just back up and let him come to you and just keep hitting him until he dies it might take a few minutes because once again we are dealing with some pretty low level stats but this is a pretty much surefire way of us defeating him without taking a hit so once he's dealt with it's time to start backtracking so which one you want to make sure you leave the way you came so head back out of the door which should be right next to you make sure you ditch the crate unless you want to take it with you but honestly these things become more of a liability so what you want to do is you want to make your way to the left and we're going to head back to the second town if you want to speed things up a little bit you can just jump into the pit however you will respawn with half of your money so if you don't want to bother walking you can always have that option as well but the second town isn't really that far away so once you are back here this is where I recommend level grinding if you want to this is going to be optional because you can actually beat the game with just your base stats however if you are struggling later on in the later portions of the game this is going to be the best spot to level grind at least early on so what you want to do is you want to make sure you go back to that exit which leads to the construction site and then what you want to do is you want to make sure you try to defeat as many enemies here as possible the reason I recommend this be your grinding spot early on is because there's going to be an optional boss that appears once you have defeated all of the enemies in the area, and he is going to drop quite a significant amount of cash, at least at this point in the game. Also, you are very close to the town, so you can heal up if you need to, and you also have a place where you could buff your stats without walking too far, so you're not taking any incidental hits. 
When it comes to what you want to upgrade, you want to make sure you hit up the diner, which should be the third building over from the entrance. The two most useful things at this point of the game are going to be the Miso Fish, which is the topmost option. That should give you defense plus three for 450 yen, as well as the Curry, which is going to be the bottommost option for 600 yen, and that's going to give you plus one kick. And kicking is way more useful than punching in this game, so we're just going to stick to that as our main means of attack. So level up your stats to whatever degree you find necessary. You can max them out if you really want to spend the time, but even spending a few minutes here to boost them up slightly is going to help out in the long run. Once you do have these stats to your liking, it's time to move on with the story. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you head to the left, you want to go past the construction site, and then the next screen over to the left should have a little detour which you can take to the playground. This should start your first mini boss fight against the gang known as the Zombies. What you want to do is you want to make sure you line yourself up with him. You want to start off with a dash and then do a big running kick. Then your goal is to try to be aggressive on your kicks and try to keep him away from his chain. The way the AI works in this game is they are always going to go for other weapons. So he should start moving his way to the right in order to grab a rock or something. Just keep up with the kicks and make sure you try to beat him before he can land any hits on you with any weapons. Once you have beaten him, him, that should be the first of the three zombies taken care of. Head back to the second town and then we're going to work our way back to the auto shop. You can take this time to heal or continue to level grind if you need your stats up or anything. But once you are back at the bridge, just make sure you keep working your way to the right uh, until we get back to the auto shop from earlier. If you are playing this with the intention of just speeding through everything and not working on your stats, you can actually skip all the enemies by jumping on it to the higher ground. So just make sure you do that and just sprint across unscathed. Once you get to the forest, make sure you take the turn and then same thing here. You can jump on the brick wall and then just sprint along and skip all the enemies. So work your way towards the auto shop. You can actually jump on the roof of the auto shop and just drop down if you want to absolutely skip any enemies that may spawn there. Once inside, make sure you take out any enemies that appear on this side. Should be pretty easy since you shouldn't get any more than two of them. Then you're going to have the enemies against the wall. Make sure you don't engage with them. Instead, we're just going to jump and stay on the second floor and then just drop down once we get to the other exit where we fought the first boss. Leave through the door and you should now be on the other side of the shop. Make sure you sprint to the right. You want to go through the tunnel and then you should be on the other side of the high rise building. Then once there, what you have to do is you have to make sure you defeat all of the enemies in this area. Doing so should spawn the second of the three zombie mini bosses. Since these guys stand around to talk, what you can do is you can get to the early jump on them. But same strategy, you want to make sure you be aggressive with your kicks. If you took the time to level up your stats, you can just keep spamming the kicks and you should land pretty hard damage. Be a little careful on blocks and counter punches and you should be able to whip him by smacking him into the corner. And that should take care of the second guy. On to the next screen, which is going to be this construction area with the bunch of pipes. Same thing as the last screen, what you want to do is you want to make sure you try to take out all of the enemies in the area, and that should get the third of the zombie mini bosses to appear, and then we're going to stick with our strategy of just spamming kicks. So he should spawn by the exit, which means that's going to be a good position for you. So you can just stick him in the corner and then just keep kicking away until he dies. Be a little careful. Try not to let him escape to grab the tire or anything. And you should be able to take him out in a few hits if you manage to have a high enough kick stat. Even if you have base stats still, you could still wear him down slowly but eventually. And once he goes down, it's time to head in to the third town. This is also another ideal spot to level grind. The reason for that is the third shop over, which is going to be a candy store, is going to have some very cheap items in here. Everything is only going to be 100 yen, and each of these is going to boost one of your offensive stats. From top to bottom, it's going to be strength, throw, weapon, punch, and kick. Personally, for me, I like to go with strength and kick, but they are so cheap, you can feel free to max out the other stats if you want to. So what you basically want to do is you want to make sure you buy a bunch of these. Keep in mind these are inventory items so you can only carry a few at a time so once the game tells you you can't buy anymore it's time to leave the store and then once you are back out on the street it's time to actually use these in your inventory
So a quick little tutorial on how to use the inventory items. Hit Y to bring up the pause menu, then go into your first option, which should be the default. Once in here, you are going to have a list of items. All you have to do is just keep mashing B to consume all of them. You should get the stat boost that you need. But of course, we're just going to eat all of them while we're here anyways, so we can head back to the shop and drop more money to get even more candy. So once your pockets are empty, just hit the A button to exit and then hit the Y button to unpause. And we should now be back in the game with all of our stats all leveled up. To level grind, we're just going to head to the left through the exit and we're just going to stick to this area. Again, very close to town in case you need healing. And the enemies here are going to start dropping a significant more amount of cash. But since the candy is so cheap, we should be able to get a about six to eight stat boosts per screen. So just make sure you stick to level grinding here if you really want to. But again, you can always beat the game using your base stats if you just want to speed things along and get the achievement as quick as possible. Whenever you are done level grinding and it is time to leave, make sure you continue your way to the right. You're going to continue through town and then get to this construction area. Keep working your way to the right. We're going to head over to the old steel mill. You want to make sure you go through the door. Then once you are here, you need to make sure you clear this jump. So you need a running start, big jump. If you miss the jump, you can just take this door up to the second floor and skip that if you must. But this is going to be the point of no return to the previous part of town. Once here, make sure you jump on this balcony and then work your way to the right. The leader of the zombies is going to be here if you manage to defeat the other three. What you have to do is you have to make sure you defeat him as well. Same strategy, you want to make sure you start off with a big running kick and your goal is to try to keep him as far away from his weapon as possible. If you have the opportunity to, what you want to do is you want to make sure you pick up his brass knuckles and just throw them away to the left. That way he won't be able to retrieve them and you just focus on laying the smack down on him by spamming all of those kicks. So once you manage to finally take him out the door is going to open up to the downtown area and then we can continue on with the second half of the game we should now be in the last town. What you want to do is you want to just work your way to the right. There's something really useful that we can buy here that won't mess up the achievement. There's a few stat boosting things, but they're not all that useful. So just keep working your way to the right until you get to this street. Make sure you take the turn here. You should now be in front of the school. What you have to do is you have to make sure you take out all of the enemies in the area. They are going to be a little tough. This is the end game, so try your best to get through this. Once again, you can feel free to level grind at the town if your stats are still low or if you aren't too prepared to deal with all of the baddies here but once you take out the last guy the gate is going to open and then the next boss is going to appear what you need to do is you need to make sure you defeat him in order to get access to the school but once you defeat him for the first time you should have permanent access to the school at least in this run now that he's taken care of, it's time to head through the gate. You should now be in the gymnasium. What you have to do is you have to make sure you take out all of the enemies here as well to trigger the next boss fight. So the boss fight is going to appear on the far right. You need to make sure you defeat him to get access to the higher levels of the school. He's actually not too hard. Once again, any bosses that appear in the back corner of the screen are easy to kill because you can just pin them up against the wall and just kick them until they die. So make sure you do that and you will now have access to move on to the next part of the school. So what you want to do is you want to work your way back to the left and then you have to make sure you jump on these balance beam things right here. So try to get a jump up here to the lower one, then up to the higher one. Then the easiest way up to the balcony is to stand underneath the basketball hoop and just jump straight up. Jump onto the backboard and then jump up one more time to get to the balcony. Head through the open door on the left. Take the stairs up twice and you should be on the topmost floor. You have to make sure you take out all of the enemies here. They are going to be pretty tough so make sure you be a little careful. Careful. Watch out for their weapons. Those things will mess you up if you aren't too, too careful. But we are almost done with the game. So after you defeat them, we are going to have the pen ultimate boss who are going to take the form of the double dragons. You get some pretty nice music, which is going to be a reference to the other Technos property. This fight is going to be a little tough, however there is a nice way to cheese the AI. What you want to do is you want to make sure you pick up every weapon and you want to make sure you throw them at the bottom of the screen towards the right. Once you are ready, just sprint all the way to the end of the hallway and they are going to appear out of this door. What you want to do is you just want to kick them in the corner. If they do get separated, one of them is just going to get stuck trying to pick up sticks. So basically you just want to take that time in order to kick the other one. They won't stay there forever, however that should buy you enough time to deal significant 
significant damage to one. However, your goal is to try to keep them together as long as possible because you can just kick them both at the same time. So hopefully your fight goes well. This is probably the toughest fight in the game since you do have to fight two of them. And honestly, I find this harder than even the final boss, which we are about to fight. But once you get through it, you should be able to defeat both of them. And then we're going to head through the last door in order to take on the last boss. Head through the last door, you should now be on the roof. Just like all of the other bosses, we're going to start off with a big running kick and we're going to lay the smack down with our kicks. My best advice is to try to stay out of his stick range. Just like the other AI in the game, his initial goal is to try to pick up a weapon. So if you can try to keep the weapon behind him, the better. And if you can also try to pin him against the left wall and just keep spamming kicks. He does have a high block percentage, so be a little careful of that, but you can eventually will him away slowly but eventually this is going to be significantly harder than a case where we would have access to the mock kick slash dragon feet however it is possible to do as long as you just keep up with the kicks and try to keep out of his weapon strikes you can also try to pick up the stick and try to smack him with this too but once again kicking is more efficient because you can kick faster than you can swing a weapon your initial goal with that is to just keep him away from the stick so he doesn't hurt you but eventually with enough perseverance you should be able to kick him to his death and and once you get past the last conversation and the credits start rolling, we should be good for our achievement given that we started the game without using any passwords and we managed to do this without buying any of the special techniques. So credits start rolling, you get the achievement for also beating this game on normal if you haven't got that one already. That one's called Niketsu MVP for 100 gamer score. But what we're here for is going to be this one, Manly Play. 100 gamer score for this one as well. That's two achievements, 200 gamer score, and that's all there is to it.